Hello and welcome to the Cold Coffee Club, a podcast brought to you by Houston Moms. We're here to give you a little bit of that mom-to-mom connection, fun, and conversation amidst all the chaos. Join us as we take a break from doing all the things and explore the wide spectrum of this crazy motherhood role. We'll interview fun guests, talk about cool grown-up topics, laugh, share, and grow together. So go ahead, reheat that coffee and put your feet up. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Cold Coffee Club. I'm Ashley. Hi, this is Jenny. We're excited to be back and dive into this amazing topic, which is crawfish. It's it's huge here. That was a huge selling point when I moved here. Um, <laughs> I had never had it till I moved here. And then I tried it and I was like, I love it here. I have to move here. I have to live here always <laughs> and forever. <laughs> well, and I just full disclosure, do not eat crawfish, but I am married to a Louisiana man. And he is, uh, let's just say slightly passionate about the topic. <laughs> Um, I was telling Ashley before we started that he, when we go eat crawfish, he will order 10 pounds for himself. And I'm not married to a large man. Uh, he's not all that tall and he's not all that big, but he will throw down some crawfish. Um, and you know, I know there's different people sometimes call it mud bugs. Sometimes people call it crawdads. It's pretty, it's like a regional, how people refer to them. Yeah. Um, he's very firm on that they are crawfish. So he's from New Orleans. So do with that what you will. Um, but he, you know, there's ways to eat them. You know, I actually asked him before we started this, I said, Hey, walk me through, how do you eat your crawfish? And he said, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta twist it in half. Mm -hmm. You gotta peel back the half of it. Mm -hmm. And then you pinch the tail and you grab the meat with your teeth. And then you throw away the rest of the shell. A lot of times if people have a crawfish boil at their house, they'll set up like a long table and put like some butcher paper over it. And then they'll sometimes like cut a hole in the table and put a trash can in the oh, middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can throw the shells away the whole time. So Wait, so just... question, does yeah. your Louisiana man suck on the head of the crawfish so i didn't want to use that phrase because i heard it so much because he was like you got to suck on the head that's what it is (laughs) i know but i hate saying it but yes he does indeed suck the head (sighs) oh my gosh (laughs) he sure does so i I was very adamant for those reasons i'm out yep yep (laughs) I used to be very adamant that you do not do that. And then like, if it's done well, it's like all the juice is in there and it's so good. I mean, I understand <laughs> the concept, but just like on principle, I'm like, Ooh, oh, it's, it's horrendous. It's, it's, if you really think sure about it, it's it. gross. <laughs> and he gets it with all the corn and the, you know, and the potatoes yeah we'll go to a friend's house like one of his best friends who is also from new orleans also now lives here in houston and they do a big boil every year and you like turn down the street and you can smell it when you yeah. drive there. he's oh, out there yes. with his big paddle yep i mean it's a whole event oh it is it, it is it's it's mm, it's like my know, favorite time of year <laughs> we have there's a lot of houston moms team members and contributors that are um Louisiana either have lived there or mm-hmm. um I mean we lived there for well Grant of course is from there but I lived there with him for two years but then there's several girls on our team that are from there we should do a Houston mom's crawfish boil maybe next year I'm going to talk to Megan I love it I oh my gosh I bring all it. the kids have a big yes. old time we could have like a cook-off like uh-huh. oh and I, mean, I know everybody has their own techniques so I would yeah. ooh. I'm, we're gonna sell it. t-shirts i got the oh, whole <laughs> we're on it it's happening just now. telling her it's happening like guess what we said it on the podcast <laughs> <It's> um, <official. laughs> guess what <laughs> ashley and i had a discussion about it yep. okay so tell us some stuff about houston pot houston podcast houston crawfish Go for it. <laughs> so yeah so like i said i'm not from here and when i first tried it um i when i first moved here 
the first time, like nine years ago, I used to go to a place called Blue Water Seafood. And there mm-hmm. are locations off of 290 in Jersey Village. And um, I went to the one on 1960 in Willowbrook. And that was like my go-to place. And I don't know what it's like now, but literally I was there when I was pregnant with my first, I was there like three times a mm-hmm. week. It was ridiculous. It Mama was, gotta have it. Oh, oh, constantly. Um, and so now um, I visited, so I go to Tad's Louisiana Cooking. There okay. are locations in Katy. Um, I know they have one in Tomball and College Station. And side note, they have an all-you-can-eat crawfish boil. Um, the, by, this, by the time this one comes out, the one in Katy will have already happened, but there's going to be one in Lake Charles on March 12th through 13th, uh, one in Tomball uh, okay. the 19th through 20th, one in College Station the 26th through the 27th. So check their uh, social media and their website and get details for that. They are, I love their crawfish. Like it's, it's not as good as it's very <laughs> bold for them to say all you can eat because yes. there are some men and I'm, women too I'm sure but there are yeah. some people that can like I mean all yeah. you can eat I mean if it's out there I could eat a good 10 mm-hmm. to 12 pounds like if we're just hanging out for the day I can yeah. eat quite a bit <laughs> yeah especially if it's not all in one sitting if exactly be, like, back and forth that's yes. very yes. good for them Yes, absolutely. And there's, it's, it's very good. It's a good go-to. And I think partly because I lived in Katie, so we went there quite a bit. Um, But there are also, uh, there's LA crawfish. That is a fan favorite. They have a great like garlic butter sauce on their Mm. crawfish and it is, and there's, they have locations everywhere. So I can just like find one randomly and just pop in because I feel like crawfish. (laughs) And my favorite right now is the crafty crab and they have several locations as well but the one closest I don't know that I've the- heard of that oh girl oh it's there's one on Westheimer that I go to a lot and so first of all they do these like big boils and they bring it out in a in a bag and it's like sealed off and it's all steamy and yummy Mm. and they have this seasoning called the boom and so it is a mix of their Cajun seasoning um their buttery garlic and their lemon pepper put together it's so good. I ordered a container just to take home to just put on stuff. I'm like, I could put this on pasta. I could put this on. It is, it's, I'm sure it has all the calories in it. Yes. And oh, I don't, of course. <laughs> and I don't even care. Yeah. I don't care no, at all. <laughs> sometimes we just can't really consider that as part no, of it. Not at all. Not, not at all. all. It is incredible. Um, and I'm a big fan of doing crawfish myself. I love just running to HEB and just buying a bag. Some HEB locations will let you split one of those huge bags. But right. if, if you can't split it, find a group of people who will come over and eat. And I have like a couple really big pots and I will just make batches all day long. Um, I'm kind of a snob. Like I like it my way. (laughs) So, um, you know, I love to, so I've never purged. Well, I've purged my crawfish once and I felt like it was a lot of extra work for no reason. And that's basically just getting them to get rid of everything. And I find that unless I was doing it wrong, I found that it doesn't, really do that much to make it worth it and I feel like if you're eating crawfish you're committing to whatever's in there just yeah just do it so and can I just say you're you brought up a very good point one of my things that I have a hard time with eating the crawfish is I'm like this is a lot of work for a very small amount of meat yeah yeah it's just my personal I'm like this is a lot of effort but, but if it's you so good. love the flavor, I, I understand. I get where you're coming from. And but the I, more you do it, the easier it becomes. And then it's not really work anymore. Like people say the same thing about crab legs and it is a lot of work, but once right. you get like good at it, you're just like, yeah, yeah, got it. Like yeah. it's real simple. Yeah, crab legs, same concept where I'm yeah. just like, there is just, I mean, we're using tools and mechanisms and we're <laughs> like, what are we doing? You become a ninja at it. (laughs) Once you get good, it's like a ninja and you're just like, like it's real simple, really fast. It's I'm over here with my fettuccine Alfredo. Just like (laughs) map that up, man. Yep. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I took a friend of mine from Denver to go have crawfish and she's just like, I don't, first of all, it just seems really barbaric what you're doing. (laughs) Fair enough. That's fine. <laughs> and she's like, but there's, there's, there's poop in there. 
<laughs> I'm like, yeah, Thank I mean, you. just <laughs> valid just swipe it off. You're fine. Valid concerned Denver friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's fine. It's whatever. Don't really, I mean, yes, wipe away yeah. the excess, but like, just eat it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. um, oh my one, gosh. One tip that I have for people who want to cook crawfish themselves, you need to, in my opinion, first you, when you season the water and like boil them in it, you only boil it for like five to eight minutes, I think. And then you just let it sit there and like absorb all the juices. And that's where all that amazing flavor comes from. So I will like boil it for five minutes and then just sit it there for 45 minutes, just so it soaks it all in. And I hear, I hear that mushrooms are great in a crawfish boil. Really? I hear they are amazing. I don't eat mushrooms, so (laughs) I won't. I don't, I've never heard of that, but also- yeah, I'm not a big crawfish eater. So right. maybe that's a thing and I just don't even know. But I hear they are delicious. So I might have to try one just to try it, but I don't like mushrooms. Um, so yeah, uh, lots of great places around Houston to try crawfish. It's, it is, it's my favorite time of year. <laughs> I'm ready to eat. It is a local delicacy is it what is. we have here. It is absolutely. So off of crawfish now I mean like now I can't even think straight because I'm like okay should I go get some for lunch today? it's coming up on our lunchtime here as we're yep. recording this so. this is true um so let's spill the tea for this week Jenny what are your highs and lows for this week so we were over the weekend speaking of Louisiana we went to Louisiana this weekend and we make this trip a lot my husband's family is there and on our drive there um, we got caught in just some horrific traffic, um, pretty much the whole drive there. We were in traffic. It took us twice as long to get there as usual. Yeah. Um, pretty much, like I said, the whole drive. So, um, a usual four to five hour drive took us about eight to nine hours and we were stuck on a bridge and park for like two hours. And, um, it was really just awful. It was the four of us, me, my husband, two kids and the dog in the Mm. car. And, um, everybody was just, um, not really getting along. Um, (laughs) and everyone was cranky. And I used to carry in the car, like a little portable, little like squatty potty thing in the car for the kids. And I did not have that. And people needed to go to the bathroom when we were stuck on a bridge and there were tears and I didn't have enough snacks. And I just felt like a big failure and I was not really being in the best of moods and it just wasn't great. Yeah. Um, But on a positive note, when we did finally stop, uh, we pulled over finally. We were able to get off the road and go into a Cracker Barrel for dinner to remind ourselves that we love one another. And, um, <laughs> you know, in Cracker Barrels, there's like the little store. Yeah. Area. And my That's kids very store. much know about that store. They love that store. And so before we even walked into the restaurant, my mom brain kicked on. And I yeah. said, hey, everybody come here. And we were in the parking lot and I said, we're going to walk in, we're going to go to the bathroom, we're going to eat. We're not eat, We're not going into that store. We're not yeah. looking, we're not touching, we're not getting anything, we're not getting candy or toys or anything. I, I was just, we're going to preset some expectations because I just could not handle yeah. any type of meltdown that was about to happen yeah. from like, I don't want that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I was proud of myself that I like had the forethought to go, hey, this is about to be another meltdown because yeah. he wants this, you know, Hot Wheels car that we're not getting. Yeah. Um, so the the fail was just, um, honestly, the fail was on the roads between Texas and Louisiana, but yeah. also that I did not become come prepared for those things. Mm. Um, but the win was just trying to make uh, decisions to prevent worse things from happening and it panned out nicely it sure did we were able to eat and everyone had a little bit of a second wind yeah we got there around midnight but figured it out (laughs) tell me about you sister friend oh goodness well my fail I have a fail turned win and I'm okay we love it excited yes yes so uh, just recently, uh, my divorce was finalized, and okay. that, was, 
Yeah. And it was a whole, it was a mix of emotions. Sure. But, and I'm sure if any of my list, if any of our listeners are, you know, getting divorced or, or have gone through that, I'm sure like me, you felt like you failed a little bit. Like mm. why, why couldn't we get it together? Why could it be this? Um, and so it kind of feels like you've messed up a little bit. But after everything was done, and even during um, our divorce proceedings, um, so side note, divorce court is like on Zoom now, which is very okay. interesting. It was very odd. You didn't really know how to behave. And so the judge was like, everyone who I'm not talking to, mute yourselves, turn off your camera. It was very weird. And so we listened to other couples <laughs> dealing with their divorces, which was interesting that feels so strange it was to me. so strange so strange and my ex-husband and I were texting during it and we're like this is awkward and then like some other people's stories were very interesting and uh they sounded like a whole lot more drama than what we had we were kind of just <laughs> joking back and forth like hey I mean at least it wasn't like that <laughs> like we're good we're good we're, yeah. we feel good <laughs> Yes, we were like, look at us. We're ours was really quick and easy. Like, do you- I feel slightly <laughs> healing. Like, yes, <laughs> it really did. It really felt a little nice. We we're like, so look at nice. us. <laughs> and then afterward, you know, and while we were talking to the judge, it was very short and sweet. And like, yes, we agree on this, this, and this. We're good. We have it worked out. And so then afterward, we got on the phone and talked for a few minutes and everything was very amicable. And we were just like, okay, Aww. we've got this. Like, moving forward, let's work as a team and hopefully at some um, point we'll become friendly again. Like I, I can't say we're friends at this point, but we're working toward it. And uh, okay. so it's been fun. We've invited each other over for dinner a couple of times. Like, Hey, the boys want to hang out. Do you want to come over? Oh. And so it's been, it's been kind of awesome. The last few weeks have been really good for us. So good. it's a, it's a fail turned win. So I'm, I'm proud of y'all, Ashley. I know oh, it's so you. like, like you said, bittersweet and yeah. like, I mean, I've never been through it personally, but right. I also I've been, I've walked the road with some people and yeah. I just know that like, even when it's the right thing, it never feels like, a, you know, yeah. wherever, even if there is some relief in it, there is still pain in it. But at the same time, I know that, um, anytime you can find some sort of like amicable thing, like I know yeah. that is like the best thing for you and for your boys. And so I'm thankful yeah that you have that, you know, and I hope that that continues. That's great. Yeah. We're, we're in a good place right now. So I love it. Yeah. Yay. So, okay. I think we have, um, Oh, I want to do a quick cream and sugar, which is where we talk about something in Houston that we're loving. Um, Yes. And so um, tell me yours. Yeah. I went, we kind of had like a surprise thing. I basically, we had to go to, or not had to, we went to an event, um, in Houston last week for, Mm -hmm. um, a charity for, it's called the Joe Necro foundation. And it is a charity that supports families that are, um, walking through, um, a family member that, um, had a stroke or an AVM, Mm -hmm. which is like a brain aneurysm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, we were walking there and my husband passed, we passed this restaurant and he goes, Oh, there's a restaurant, there's an Italian restaurant there that I think you would really love. Yeah. Um, and I said, Oh, you'll have to take me there one day. Well, but then we go to this event and it was just like cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. And yeah. so when we left there, he walked in and just said like, Hey, do y'all have any availability? And they said, well, you don't have a reservation. I said, okay, I just thought that I would check. And she goes, well, but this other table didn't show up. So y'all can come in. Oh, cool. And so we kind of had this really last minute, like, you're like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. So we didn't have long because our babysitter is like on the clock, but we, yeah. so we had to be like, we, hello, we're sitting down and we need to order immediately. <laughs> uh, so it was a little rushed, but the restaurant is called Rosalie. Uh, it's called Rosalie, R-O-S-A-L-I-E. It's in okay. downtown Houston and it's Italian food. It's in a hotel. Like the restaurant is inside of a hotel. Okay. Um, and Oh my goodness. They had fried risotto as an appetizer, mm. which is my favorite. Um, uh, and then I got the lasagna, which no, 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 I didn't get the lasagna. I thought about getting the lasagna, Okay, um, but I got, um, 
a pasta dish that was really, really good, but you should go there. It's really cute. The atmosphere is really unique and really well decorated and yeah. I just can't recommend it enough. So I just never would have known it was there. And, you know, I of course would have thought like, oh, of course you're going to need to have a reservation, but I'm really right. glad that you checked. So that was Yeah. Fun. Oh, that's so, awesome. Rosalie is a really cute place. There was girls there having like girls dinners and the, yes, there were other people having like a date. It was the day after Valentine's Day. So I okay. think there was like some trickle, yeah. um, you know, like, yeah. okay, well, we couldn't go last night, but we're going to go tonight kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Um, it was a good, good place. Okay, so let's do what's um as far as our house blend. What was your favorite post on Houston Moms this week on our website? So, Joy, oh Joy, oh Lord, we love her. Oh, I just adore her, and she. So she's written about poo flowers. She's (laughs) she. I'm noticing a theme. (laughs) She talks about a lot of potty stuff. My gosh. <laughs> so she recently wrote um, a blog post um, titled Potty Training for Adults, number one, number two, and things all broads should know. And it is basically just reminding you bathroom etiquette, um, yes. just how to go about using the potty. She introduced so us okay. to the, the shh rule. Um, look that up. It's talking about, mm-hmm. you know, just, oh my gosh, read her post, just look it up, learn, learn <sighs> the shush, the show rule, learn it, remember it, do it, please. It's, she just, she, she just crushed it. She, and I was just cracking up. The whole when I, I'm whole telling time. you, so like, you know, one of my jobs as social media director is, you know, I, at the beginning of a week, will get all the posts that are coming up the week. Yeah. I'll see all the titles yeah and I'll kind of like calendar out the week and figure out like what I'm putting where and when mm-hmm. and when I saw the title of that and it was potty training for adults I will tell you there was a moment that I was like what is this gonna be what are we doing <laughs> I mean like, there was this moment of like oh no 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 and then I read it I was like this is the best thing I've ever yep. seen she's yep. fantastic please yep. go read it it's, it's so needed it's so needed yes we all need a refresher um it's the sh- link is in the show notes um, yes absolutely I almost want to like print it out and like leave it in random public bathrooms and just be like just be like this is a little PSA yes I feel like we should I think Mm -hmm. that's a great idea because I think people forgot how to we've been you know in quarantine stuff people forgot how to just how to be a grown-up yes yes how to take care of our public areas yes okay (laughs) what about yours what's your house like I really loved let me figure out what the name of it was um Rashmi uh Khadija or Dr. K as we call her Mm -hmm. and she normally writes um, I can't say normally the last several posts she has written for us have been kind of health related. Yeah. Um, but she wrote just a, the sweetest post called lifestyle lessons I learned from my pup. And it is about stuff she has learned about lifestyle from her dog and mm-hmm. just really great things about, you know, anxiety and being socially connected to others. And I just loved it. And as a dog owner, I could relate to it so much. And I just thought it was so well-written and just such a sweet, sweet little post. And I was, there were so many little nuggets there that I was like, that is so true. Yes. And I think dogs teach us so much. So I loved that, loved that from her. Yeah. That was a, that was a great one. Loved Mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah. Well, do you have a little fact to send us off with our little see you later caffeinator before see we wrap you later caffeinator? Yes. So I, I absolutely adore this. So it's just like a sweet little reminder of how our children name us as mothers and it's, it's just inherent in them. And so um, we found this post and it was saying that um, the first thing a baby can vocalize is the ma sound. And mm-hmm. so that's normally that's, that's mostly why um, in every language, the word for mother begins with that mm sound and um, or it's some iteration of the ma sound. And so like there's mama and then in every, in so many languages, it's, it's some kind of something ma. with a ma. Yes. And it's amazing. Like, so babies really name us. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah. They just I know like that. that first sound. They're like, that's my person. And that's how I get her. And I just, love mm, it. It's and so we, sweet. And then we took that and named, made it our name. Yes. It's so sweet. Oh my Good gosh. Babies. I know. Oh my gosh. Well, <sighs> 
Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be back fun. <laughs> next week to talk about more fun things. Yes. But thanks for hanging out with us today, thanks you guys. For joining. All Have right, a good see you week. Next week. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Cold Coffee Club, brought to you by Houston Moms. We wish you a fabulous week with your families and look forward to sharing many more cups of cold coffee with you.